Okay, let's continue the lecture from the last time. So previously we are talking about the simple pendulum model, and in the simple pendulum model, the basic uh, equation is we are talking about the this is the governing equation of the simple pendulum system. We have discussed in the last lecture. So um, as we know that we what we have assumed is. And that is a very important assumption is that if theta is small then sin theta is approximately equal to theta so i have told you in the last lecture that this is only valid this is valid if theta is less than 10 degrees okay yeah? so there is a very important point that if you if you have an angle which is greater than 10 degrees then the equation which is theta double dot is equal plus g over l sin theta or just jo form aapne padhi thi wo kya form thi mg l over i not sin theta equal to 0 So, if we consider angle, so sin, then we have to use, as I told you in the last lecture, we have to use Taylor series expansion, and that is sin theta is equals to theta minus theta cube divided by three factorial plus theta five divided by five factorial plus so on. And as you can easily see, when we take this expansion, then this will become highly non-linear. and that's why difficult to solve that's why this just for your information so for the current case we only consider the linear case which is sin theta is, is equals to theta so this is our assumption so if you consider the uh, solution of the if you consider the solution of this equation this is same as we have done for the mass spin system which is so if theta double dot plus omega n square theta equals to 0 it's the same thing we take then theta of t is some a1 times sin omega n t plus a2 times cos omega n t and then we have to take the same set of initial condition and so on so i'm not going um, i'm going to solve this equation because you know this solution from your pre previous case now the another extension of a simple pendulum is a very important concept that is called the compound pendulum and what is the compound pendulum the compound pendulum is a pendulum in which there is a mass distribution throughout the pendulum body clear yeah? so let's say consider this is a simple rod so th let's say this is a simple rod so in a rod there is a mass distribution throughout the body of the pendulum where we when we considered a simple pendulum what we have considered is there is a mass and there is a thread and another important assumption is the thread thread is considered to be massless clear yeah? but in this case because uh, the uh, this rod has certain mass or mass distribution that's why normally this is called as compound pendulum i'm again repeating the compound pendulum is a pendulum in which the mass is distributed throughout the length of the body whereas for the simple pendulum you can see we consider a thread and thread to be massless so that the mass is only concentrated at the end of the pendulum which is not the case for the compound pendulum so for this case the only difference being in this case we have center of mass located at the center of the pendulum uh, sorry if m and we consider length to be equals to the distance from pivot point to the center of the bob but if we consider this rod if we consider this rods to be of uniform mass distribution okay then the center of mass lies at the center and if you draw out its weight component 
it x downward equals to mg but that is located at the center of the rod clear okay? so we call this distance from the pivot point we call this as d and if 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 that is the, the pendulum for uh, with uniform mass distribution this is equals to l by 2 but there are many cases in which this mass distribution is not uniform then d cannot necessarily be equals to l by 2 it can it can be less than l by 2 or can be greater than l by 2 what we generally call it as d the only difference between simple and compound pendulum is where the restoring force applies the rest is exactly the same so we have two components again this four component is mg sin theta because we are considering this to be theta and there is a component along the length of the pendulum which is mg cos theta the same thing and if you write the equation of motion which is summation m naught is equals to i naught theta double dot so uh, the i naught theta double dot is the same the only difference between summation m naught is now we have a restoring moment and that is minus mg times sin theta now that is equals to d it is not equals to l but rather the distance from the is a distance from pivot point to the center of mass okay so if we simplify this if we take this on the right hand side what you get is i naught theta double dot plus mgd sin theta equals to 0 dividing by i naught on both sides theta double dot plus mgd over i naught sin theta equals to 0 if you if you compare these two equations for a simple and a compound pendulum the only difference is being this d in simple pendulum this is equals to l where in compound pendulum this is equals to d the rest of the equation is exactly the same the, uh, uh, the assumption we have used for a simple pendulum can also be applied for a compound pendulum and that is if theta is small then sin theta is approximately equals to theta so this equation can be written as Again, theta double dot plus mg d over i naught times theta equals to zero. This is what we have done. The only again the only difference being is the d. And now in this case, the the most difficult thing is is now where what is i naught, and that is very important. So if we consider this to be a rod. If this considered to be a uniform rod so I'm just drawing here if we consider this let's say a uniform rod like this so what we know that I naught which is the the uh, moment of inertia about pivot point is nothing but ICG which is the moment of inertia around its center of mass ICG plus MD square this is known as parallel axis theorem so you can now find I naught is equals to ICG where the ICG is a moment of inertia uh, about the center of mass plus MD square. And what is D? Again from the previous slide, this is nothing but the distance from pivot point to the center of mass. Now for a uniform rod, we know that ICG is nothing but 1 by 12 ML square. If we consider the total length of this pendulum, as equals to L so I so ICG sorry ICG is nothing but 1 by 12 ml square this is ICG and if you have any confusion just concern it from your internet 
plus m times what is the l by 2 square so you can see in, when we are studying about the simple pendulum uh, there is no uh, there is only i naught is nothing but simply ml square but for a compound pendulum or the pendulum which is distribution is um, uh, through is the mass distributed throughout the body the i naught is slightly complex uh, has a slightly complex formula so i naught is equals to 1 by 12 ml square plus 1 by 4 ml square if you take the lcm and simplify it you get 1 by 3 ml square so this is square This is square it equals to a 1 by 3 ml square. Now, the very important question arises is that even that is not equals to uh, uh, if the mass distribution is not uniform, then I naught is very difficult to find. Then we have to use experimental methods, which I will explain you in when we are solving numericals. But for a uniform rod, I naught is equals to 1 by 3 ml square. Putting the value of I naught in the main equation mg and d we take d as l by 2 for a uniform case this is not the valid for a non-uniform mass distribution this is only valid for uniform mass distribution only valid for uniform mass distribution divided by 1 by 3 ml square theta equals to 0 and just simplifying it equals to uh, if I just write like this mg l by 2 into 3 by m l square into theta is equals to 0. Just simplifying it, the m is cancelled with this m, the square is cancelled with this l. So what we get finally is theta double dot plus 3g by 2l theta equals to 0 and as we know that whatever appears with theta is nothing but the square of angular natural frequency and that is equals to so omega n is nothing but under root 3g by 2l this is for the compound pendulum now as you can see that the only there is no difference between the variables involved that is g and l in simple pendulum, it is also on root g by l. The only difference now is now we have numbers 3 by 2. And if we try to compare it, I'm just comparing it in the next slide. So for a simple pendulum, for a simple pendulum, the, <clears throat> the omega n is under root g by l or you can say one times under root g by l and for a compound pendulum for a compound pendulum that is equals to and if i take the 3 by 2 divide 3 by 2 and take it its square root so what we get is One point two two, so it's one point two two times under root g by l. If you compare both simple pendulum and a compound pendulum, the only difference is the natural frequency of compound pendulum is slightly larger than the simple pendulum. But the the physics behind a simple pendulum and compound pendulum is exactly the same. So this is the concept of compound pendulum. In a compound pendulum, there is a very important concept of the center of percussion this is a very important concept in the compound pendulum that is the center of percussion and what is the center of percussion i'll just give you the idea behind it although it has the mathematical understanding but i'm not going into the mathematics of the center of percussion i'll just give you an idea like this or rather I draw straight so let's say you have 
the compound pendulum okay so for a uniform distribution the center is put at the center theek hai you considered it as d your pivot point this is your pivot point this is your pivot point and uh, okay there is a point which lies very important point ye idhar aur suniga there is a point which lies between the center of the mass which is this center of mass kelly is known cm center of mass and the edge of the pendulum such that if you apply a force if you apply a force at this point i'm again repeating there is a point which exists between center of mass and the edge of the pendulum that i have represented here as cp center of percussion such that if you apply an impulse force at this point there will be no reaction no reaction at the pivot point i am again repeating there is a certain point in the uh, compound pendulum between the center of mass and the edge of the pendulum such that if you apply a force impulse force at that particular point which i am calling it as cp if you uh, no matter how large the force is there will be no reaction at the pivot point this point is called center of percussion and just for drawing it i just draw as this distance from x where x is the distance from pivot point to the center of percussion and after some uh, doing some mathematics x is come out to be k square plus d square over d so i have the whole proof of this formula if you want require it i can give you the total mathematical proof but in any case the x is distance from pivot point to the center of percussion and what is k uh, uh, the d as you know d what is d d is the distance from d is the distance from pivot point to the center of mass c p is the d is the pivot point distance from pivot point to center of mass and what is k the k is the radius of gyration radius of gyration and for the, a rod and for a rod so there is a imaginary circle around the center of mass around with the whole body so this is normally we call it as k is around at which the mass of the whole body seems to act in a rotating body so k for a rod is nothing but l by under root 12 l by under root 12 so generally what uh, i i is icg is equals to m k square okay Uh, generally, if you want to write the moment of inertia of a pivot point, uh, sorry, not pivot point around the center of mass, so not confuse C G U C M. It's the same thing. Uh, it's equal to m k square, where k is the center of, uh, sorry, k is the radius of gyration, gyration, and that is equals to uh, for let's say for a for a disc, it's a k is equals to k over. Uh, uh, k is equals to r, which is the radius of the divided by under root two. similarly uh, for a hoop so this is a disc for a hoop the k is nothing but equals to r and so on for so for a rod with the uh, with the radius located at center the k is nothing but k l over under root 12 so if you are able to find the um we, for simple rod you can find the because you what you know what length is so divide length by so x can be easily found by k square plus d square over d so you know what k is you can find it from your length you know what d is just put the values you find the center of percussion
Now, center of percussion, location of center of percussion is critical. Why? Because uh, <clears throat> uh, this point is very important when generally players play, yeah, or you can in other words say, the cricket bats or rackets are designed. Why? Because in cricket bats, when the ball, when a ball hit this, when a ball hit this point, the batsman does not feel any reaction at, at the point where it has handed the bat, okay, where his wrists are. So his wrists, where he has, um, uh, has gripped the bat, the point at which his wrist is present, so it acts like a, so the batsman wrist acts like a pivot point, clear? And the, the point where the ball hits, if it is a center of percussion, his, his wrist does not feel any reaction. And uh, you can uh, relate this concept in your real life. You have all almost have played cricket and you know how uh, at a, generally in cricket is called a sweet spot. Sweet spot. Okay? The sweet spot is nothing but uh, physically it's a center of percussion. Now, uh, to getting a formula, uh, x equals to k square plus d square over d, this is a very lengthy uh, derivation. I'm not going into the detail. If you want this derivation, I can give you this. There's a whole mathematical proof behind it. Anyhow, so uh, the main idea uh, behind this is just you have to understand the concept of the center of percussion. Now, center of percussion only exists in the compound pendulum, the pendulums in which mass is distributed throughout its body. Now, an important concept can come that if, if one question can come that if the mass division is not uniform, like in case of cricket bats, then yes, it is slightly harder to find K. And then you have the uh, experimental methods that you can use that we, I will demonstrate it in the numerical. And also when you come physically in the next week. Okay, uh, so this is about the center percussion. The third important concept the last system we are going to study is about the third system is the torsional torsional vibration system clear okay what is the torsional vibration system suppose you have a rod 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 can be of aluminium can be of steel can be of any material and you have a disc. You have a disc. So this rod has a certain stiffness that I'm told, telling the last lecture, and this is called torsional stiffness. And this disc has certain I naught. So not is this, this is a moment of inertia around its O point, which is the center of rotation. Okay. So if you tend to rotate this, tend to rotate this uh, disc, and if it is fixed at this point, fixed at this point, so this disc tends to move like this. So it has a oscillatory motion. Now, Again, using the same Newton's second law of motion, which is summation m naught is equals to i naught theta double dot, same relation, or in other words, called as summation tau naught is equals to i naught theta double dot. And what is tau naught? Tau naught is the restoring torque or the restoring moment. So in this case, the restoring moment is due to the torsional stiffness of the rod, which is kt. So if I just want to write the restoring moments with nothing but minus kt times theta. And that is very important. So the restoring moment is minus kt times theta, where kt is the torsional stiffness, torsional stiffness. And if you just remember, just it's, it's worth repeating that this minus sign appears because it's a restoring force. So again, simplifying this, I naught theta double dot 
प्लस के टी टाइम्स थीटा इक्व टू जीरो थीटा डबल डॉट प्लस के टी ओवर आई नॉट टाइम्स थीटा इक्वल टू जीरो एंड अगेन यू नो अगेन फ्रॉम योर प्रीवियस टू सिस्टम्स दैट दिस इज नथिंग बट ओमेगा एन स्क्वायर थीटा इक्व टू जीरो एंड फ्रॉम दिस रिलेशन यू नो ओमेगा एन इज नथिंग बट अंडर रूट के टी ओवर आई नॉट सो यूनिट्स आर रेडियन पर सेकेंड so this is the third system that's a torsional vibration system and again i'm repeating in this system the restoring moment is nothing but the torsional stiffness of the rod and this is the rod this is that rod and you call it as disc okay so disc rod system in the disc rod system we have the torsional vibrations okay so um, the next important thing is that what is what is the nature of kt what is the torsional stiff how we can find the torsional stiffness so torsional stiffness is generally defined as if you just remember the linear stiffness so call it k is nothing but force per unit displacement or in other words this is the hooke's law f is equals to kx okay so k is equals to f over x this is a very important concept so you can now see what we can say is the linear stiffness is nothing but the linear force divided by linear displacement linear stiffness is nothing but linear force divided by linear displacement so in the same way you can define the torsional stiffness as rotational force divided by rotational displacement so what is the rotational force is nothing but torque and rotational stiffness is nothing but angular displacement which is theta angular displacement so we can define kt in the same way and if you remember this t by theta so if you remember the relation t over r is equals to t over j is equals to g theta over l and if you take this part of the relation so that is t over j is equals to g theta by l and t by theta is nothing but g j by l clear g j by l so the kt is nothing but t over theta and that is equals to g j over l so where g is the modulus so i'm just writing here g is a modulus of rigidity modulus of rigidity of what of the rod it is the modulus of rigidity of rod you cannot define kt for disc it is the kt is only exists in the rod so all these parameters are for the rod the j is the polar moment of in asia and if you don't know about again for the rod and generally this is equals to pi by 64 d4 or pi by 32 r4 any of so um, this is the polar moment of asia of the rod again for the rod and l is the length of the rod so kt can be find out by using the material properties of the rod that is if you know the model of rigidity of the rod if you know about the uh, polar moment of inertia of the rod which definitely you know about the diameter of the rod and third is the length of the rod if you know all these parameters you can find kt and i not is the uh, i not is the, for the disc i not is for the disc and for let's say if this is a uniform disc of uniform um, uh, material distribution so i not is nothing but m r square by 2 this is for the solid disc but for disc with other properties it the i not can be different depending upon the property of the disc but if, if just want to write the total relation which which looks which can be looked at a bit complex is kt sorry kt is gj over l 
the j is nothing but so not j i not is nothing but m r square over 2 provided for a solid disk so natural frequency is k t by i naught which is nothing but g j over l divided by m r square over 2 or in simple words you can call it g j or 2 g j divided by m r square l this is the natural frequency okay again the form of radians per second but again remember this is for the solid disk if the disk properties are different this, this cannot necessarily be equals to mr square over 2 but for kt with the relation for kt it's it's normally the you use the same relation yes for different material the g can be different for different diameter j can be different and length can be different now torsion vibration is normally experienced in crankshafts crankshafts camshafts flywheels uh, flywheels uh, shaft systems shaft systems uh, propellers shafts any or, or there are many other applications in in a system in which we have a disc and a rod rod is form of shaft so this is okay the last important concept is about units so kt has a units of as we know a unit of newton meter per radian you have to remember for the linear stiffness you know it's newton per meter because it's force per unit displacement so force is measured in newton and displacement is measured in meters but for the torsional vibration, sorry, for torsional stiffness, the T is form of Newton meter and theta is in form of radians. So KT is nothing but Newton meter per radian. So to summarize this, we have actually uh, modeled three basic systems of vibration. The first system is the mass spin system. We have seen how we have to drive the governing equation. And then we have find the solution of the the equation of, of the simple mass spin system then we have talked about the simple pendulum and afterwards we have talked about the compound pendulum and what is the difference between a simple and a compound pendulum what is the basic difference between a simple and a compound pendulum and the third and the basic and the last system is about the torsional vibration system and again if you look at the equation that is theta double dot plus omega n square theta equals to zero for a torsional vibration system that is and again the only difference being the I guess solution is same if theta t is equals to some a1 uh, sine omega n t plus a to some cos omega n t the solution is same the only difference being now omega n is different for the torsional vibration system and as we know from previous understanding this is nothing but the kt over i naught kt over i i hope you understood all these three basic systems uh, so uh, let's finish this lecture at this point so next time uh, we will talk about uh, we will solve some numericals that is the some example problems from your chapter number two and also some exercise problems okay thank you very much